Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com, Bitemoutlive.com, and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is November 28, 2021. And this is a, an extra video I wanted to do this week because I've gotten a number of uh, emails from folks asking me about an auction that's about to take place down in that old Bermuda Triangle of uh, Asian Art Integrity uh, uh, down in Southern, uh, down in Georgia, in the Marietta area, yet again. Another auction house has sprung up. They actually did an auction a few months ago. I didn't pay a lot of attention to it because I figured they'd learn their lesson and go away, like the auction house that we covered down in Florida that was selling all the fakes uh, that were supposed to be from the C.T. Lou collection. And in the past, of course, we've talked about uh, some of the characters down in, uh, down in the uh, Georgia area, our old friends in Roswell, the Lauren Auction Gallery, who we've done videos on, and um, uh, the reproductions that they sell. And of course, this is all just my opinion, and um, you take it for what it's worth, but uh, from what I can see, uh, they sell, uh, you know, they sell an awful lot of fakes and copies. Same thing with the Eden Auction Gallery down in that neck of the woods, and the Roswell Auction Gallery, and the Bidded Auction Gallery. And you have to keep in mind that all of these, these auction houses are within miles of one another. All right. Now, George is a lovely state. I've been down there. I have customers down there. But it, it, it is not and was not ever a hotbed of Asian art collections. And uh, we all know that and we all know what the deal is here. Uh, but there's a new auction house that has sprung up down there operating out of a group shop, um, the Woodstock Antique Mall of all things, and it's just a short hop and a jump uh, over from uh, Marietta. Um, here's the uh, outside of the building here, and it's a group shop. It's, it's a fairly typical Southern, you know, sort of a rural area group shop. It's in a mall, actually, that was, um, there's a pawn shop down here, as I recall. Yeah, there it is, Big Deal Pawn, and uh, these guys are operating right next door, and they've got their group shop, and group shops are fine. Uh, but but uh, this fellow uh, has a, 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 apparently a number of uh, uh, dealers that sell inside here, and this is the kind of thing that you're gonna you, we've all seen typically in these little group shops, mom and pops that buy and sell part time and so forth. And here's another one, and there's another stall. And you know they have these stalls everywhere like this, furniture guys, people that sold bits of bric-a-brac from their houses and so forth. Nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to buy, perfectly fine. And um, this, the fellow apparently that owns this place has decided to go into the online auction business, as far as I can tell. Um, they were advertising a sale, and we're going to get to the auction in a second, of a Chinese art. A few people emailed me and said, what's the story? Is this, you know, is this guy legit? What's the deal? And uh, I actually called them and uh, got somebody on the phone, asked them about the upcoming auction. Um, and she didn't know anything about it. She didn't know there was an upcoming sale, anything like it. I left a message. Uh, this was yesterday and asked, would they have someone call me back? And uh, this was in the late morning. And uh, by late afternoon, I hadn't heard from anybody, so I gave him a quick call back, and I got a hold of somebody there, a nice lady. And uh, I told her that I'm thinking of uh, doing a little coverage on this and, and, and about our website. And what can she tell me about the upcoming sale, the big Asian art sale? And uh, she said, oh, well, that would be the owner. He, he's, he's, he's just, that's just online. Now, there's, there's a, so, so anyway, I thought, that, well, that's interesting. It's just online. And I Googled around and I found, here it is, Woodstock Auctions. This seems to be another website that they own. Same logo, same company, same address. Um, and uh, uh, no particular uh, history behind the place uh, that I could find. There's no name of the auctioneer. There's no auctioneer license posted and so forth. Now, Georgia may be one of these states that if you do online only sales, you don't fall under the purview of the uh, State Auction Commission. The State Auctioneers Commission uh, that hand out the licenses in Georgia, they have licenses. Um, if you're not conducting a sale with people present physically in the room, they can't do anything about it. It's online, it's on the internet, and it's probably outside of their purview. That's the way it is here in Massachusetts and a number of other states. Uh, so the, the auction auction uh, committees, uh, you know, so if you're, doing an, you're looking at an auction that's strictly online, uh, you want to make sure that the auctioneer is actually licensed. All right, because there's a pretty good chance that I don't know if this guy's licensed or not, but um, um, he doesn't post his license anywhere on his site, which he's supposed to do under the uh, what's known as the UCC code in the state auction license thing. Even if you're not having people present, you're supposed to post your uh, your uh, license. But anyway, let's get over to the auction, okay? And uh, here it is. It's a two-day sale. This this portion of the sale begins on December 3rd. 
And uh, one of the things I found most striking about it was the photography. Again, you have these uh, virtually identical types of photographs. These, the, there's a style of photography that goes into these that we've seen over and over again at Lauren Gallery. We'll scroll down quickly. Um, here are their pictures. And you go to Eden Gallery. And here are their pictures. And uh, uh, let's see, the, the Roswell Gallery. Here are their pictures, all very, very similar in t style and, and lighting and so forth. And if I didn't know better, I'd swear that all these photographs were taken in the same building um, uh, because, because of the way they're done, the way they're composed, and so on and so forth. But at any rate, back to, to this sale. Uh, everything in this auction, as far as I can tell, is a fake and a copy. And the problem is, is that this, this fellow, if you go to his site and read his disclaimer, it is breathtakingly uh, uh, aggressive. And uh, basically, they're saying everything, anything you buy from us is totally up. That's your problem. It's not our problem if we, if we, even if we rip you off. It's not our problem. And uh, he's actually misstating law uh, on a number of levels because you, 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 you cannot have a disclaimer in a business agreement that's inviolate of, of your state law. In other words, you, you can't be asked to conduct a, a business deal where you're going to sign off on rights. OK, it's like saying uh, if you come to our restaurant and we triple charge you on your credit card, there's nothing you can do about it. Or if you order steak and we bring you chicken and charge you for, 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 for caviar, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, uh, it. It's just ridiculous. But that's that's an aside. What he's doing, though, under the UCC code that it's accepted across this country, and I've mentioned it before, um, is that is that in the auction world, you you cannot list things in any trade environment that is that is untrue um, and, and be off the hook, even if you do it unknowingly. So in this case, he is this listed as a Chinese Yuan Dynasty blue and white porcelain plate. It's a brand new plate. This piece of this dish is no more than probably four or five years old, if that. OK, so the argument that they're putting forward in their own contract is if you buy this from us, you can't get your money back no matter what. Actually, uh, he, 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 he better read the UCC code because he's opening himself up to liability. All right. But at any rate, uh, he's got ridiculous stuff like that in here. He's got uh, all kinds of oddball uh, vases, beakers, and flasks and whatnot. Here's a, a fake Yuan style jar, just a ridiculous thing with a six to eight, six to nine hundred dollar estimate and an opening bid of three hundred dollars. Now, the interesting thing is that is he includes in here a number of people. They're, they're doing the provenance naming dead people thing. And uh, always be suspicious of this. Here you have a fellow who's named uh, Garrick Baders Jr. of Cartersville, Georgia, died in 2020. Well, I took the time to, um, uh, um, to do a little searching. And I went to Cartersville and, and on, on the Internet and searched around and couldn't find an obituary for the guy. And in every town, when someone dies, especially this recently, there's always an obituary, especially if he was a fairly well-known citizen. There's always an obituary pretty much published. Further, I went over to um, uh, uh, Ancestry.com and put the name Garrick, spelled G-E-R-R-I-K, Baders, in there, B-A-T-E-R-S. Um, and according to Ancestry.com, nobody named Garrick Baders has ever been born nor died in the United States, much less in Cartersville, Georgia. And he's got other things in there listed with people's names and when they died and what state they were from. And I Googled them. Not one of them produced an obituary. All right. So uh, here he is, is. He would seem to be fabricating collector's names. OK. And of course, anybody that owned pieces like this and like this uh, would be pretty well known in the collector's world. Somebody would know where they got them. This is from a guy it's supposed to be in the, from the collection of somebody named Gerald Martin Palmer, died in 2019 from Georgia, a private collector, uh, a metals decorate, metals decorated. The language in here sounds to me like English isn't this guy's primary language. A metals decorated U.S. veteran army. U.S. consultant, Republic of China, and later is a security specialist in military policemen in the Philippines. 
Um, linguistically, that doesn't even really make much sense. Uh, so again, we're seeing the same sort of uh, twists in language, the same use of uh, uh, names and attributes. To, to all, they always seem to include down in Georgia. In all of these these auctions with all these copies and fakes that all those auction houses seem to do it within this 20 mile area, they, they nearly virtually always either have them uh, as being former military or somehow formally connected to the Chinese government. And when you go to check, um, it's it's rarely the case that you can find anything about them at all that they ever even lived. All right, but they they use those names, and of course he has things like this, a uh, a Ming Dynasty Jai Jing Wu Tai lidded jar, and we all know this jar. These jars, there are only a handful of them in the world. They've been on the covers of books and magazines, and they sell for high in seven figures. Um, and here you have one with a four to six hundred dollar estimate and so on and so forth. And he definitively states it made in the years of Jai Jing reign period, the great Ming dynasty, which is an absolute lie. That's an absolute lie. All right. So um, you keep that in mind. And then, of course, you have this Qin Lung Markin period uh, cobalt blue vase. Now, anybody that's looked at porcelain for any length of time will know right away that this vase is a fake just because of the, the tonality of the cobalt and the way it's drawn and so forth. It's just, it's just the, the drawing is a bit convoluted and the cobalt's the wrong color, the drawing is bad and all that. But to a new collector, to a neophyte, if you're new out there, you don't want to go any, within 10 miles of this auction house. Um, well, you can't go within 10 miles of it because they have no preview and um, they have no they have no phone number um, uh, on their on their advertisement. However, the address is the same as that uh, uh, the Woodstock uh, group shop that's run out of the strip mall, which seems to be I guess that's how they do a lot of antique business down in the south out of strip malls. I don't know. Around New England, it always seems to be in a freestanding building somewhere in a nice place. But at any rate, this is in Bell's Ferry in Ackworth, Georgia, which is just uh, east of uh, Marietta and Roswell, very, very close by. Uh, you know, a matter of a 15, 20 minute drive, as far as I could tell, um, according to the map. But at any rate, they have this listed up as a two day uh, auction. Uh, they've had an auction a few months ago. And if you want to see what the results were that they got, you'll, it sort of tells the tale. But as I said, a number of people asked me if I'd look into this and, and, and share my thoughts. And all I can tell you is, in my opinion, everything in this auction is a fake. All right. From what I've seen. Um, I looked at the bronzes, the furniture is all fairly new. The porcelain, of course, are reproductions and the, and the jades are um, uh, have no age that I can discern from the photographs. Uh, and they, as I said, they're all photographed remarkably similarly to the photos used by the people supplying Lauren, Eden, um, Roswell and the, the bidded auction house. Now, keep in mind that those four auction houses have all had large sales within the last month. OK, think about that for a minute. I think one, a couple of them were two day sales, but they've all had these big sales with what would be, if authentic, record breaking items all within a period of a couple of weeks. And they have these numerous times a year all out of this area. And uh, 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 it's all just uh, pretty shameful. And I hope at some point the state of Georgia um, uh, investigative division will get after them um, uh, and uh, 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 go after these guys for committing fraud. All right. And that's all there is to it. This is just point blank fraud uh, because they're not saying Chinese porcelain vase with dragons on it or something else. They're naming periods. They're naming this making declarative statements of age. And once you make a declarative statement of age, you cannot turn around and say, uh, well, that doesn't really count. That's just what we think. All right. And I don't know how these auctioneers and I don't care where you are, if you're an auctioneer, if you're putting declarative statements of age on things and not expressing that in our opinion, this is of the Yuan dynasty or this kind of thing, you are liable no matter what you no matter what your conditions of sale say, you are liable. And um, I hope somebody um, with deep pockets uh, at some point go after them or perhaps the federal agency or the state agencies that regulate commerce because uh, these people are all bad for the business. They're criminals, in my opinion, and um, uh, I would like to see them all prosecuted. All right. 
Uh, I realize these auctions also, you have to keep in mind, are not targeted towards the U.S. market. All these auctions are targeted towards Chinese buyers who believe that if something is for sale in the United States, it's probably authentic because, um, uh, after all, you know, uh, oh, it's coming from a state in Georgia in the United States. It must be real. All right. And they think they've, they've discovered something. It's really, really sad. All right, that's my that's my run of it. I didn't mean to get quite so annoyed, but I'm really getting fed up with these clowns. And uh, 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 as we talked about the C.T. Lou fakes auction down in Florida a few weeks ago, the same kind of thing. The stuff brought nothing. It was rubbish. Uh, I never heard a word from the guy, by the way. A number of people asked me if I heard from any of these people. I don't hear from them because they know that from a lit litigious standpoint, there's not a thing they can do about it um, because I'm expressing an opinion. I'm expressing the opinion that they're crooks and um, they're misstating everything. And they all know that they are. And their silence is a confirmation of that. All right. And uh, though, though early on, a couple, one of them did try to uh, get us to remove a video on this. We didn't do it. Um, that even despite a cease and desist order, we just said, yeah, fine, go ahead, sue us. We'll make sure it's in the news. All right, and uh, we're going to keep doing these. I'm going to keep doing these and uh, just keep after them, okay? So the, uh, the Woodstock Auction Gallery operated out of the Woodstock Antique Mall has got a fake auction coming up in just a few days on December 3rd and 4th, I believe they are the dates. And uh, we're going to double check those dates in just a second here. So we're absolutely on it. There it is, December 3rd and December 4th in Ackworth, Georgia. Stay away. All right, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we have some more videos coming out next week. And uh, thanks so much. All righty, bye-bye.